initializing systems, updating competitive play for Overwatch 2. I'm your host for today, ML7, and today we're gonna read this. Competitive play has been at the heart of the Overwatch community for years, and we have long-term plans to nurture this game mode far into the future. We're excited to share how we're updating competitive in Overwatch 2, starting with the goals that guided our decisions. First, seasons should be exciting and tell their own individual stories. Each one should take players on a new journey with new heroes, maps, game modes, or balance changes. Second, we believe losing games shouldn't be a purely negative experience. Competitive players should feel a sense of progression after games, and we want to provide players with the tools needed to improve and rank up, Omega Lul. Finally, we need an improved competitive experience for returning players for the benefit of both of them and their teammates, so no trolling teammates. Let's dive deeper into what we're doing to make Overwatch 2 competitive feel fun and fair to play. Kick W. Unlocking, unlocking competitive? Overwatch 2 will not have portrait levels, and match experience will go towards leveling up your battle pass. Okay, I got scared. New players who create an Overwatch 2 account on or after October 4 will have to play through a guided first time user experience. Ftue! Ftue! This is how I pronounce this. Ftue! They will need. They will need to complete. F and win 50 quick play matches before competitive unlocks. This gives new players time to prepare for the high expectations that come with competitive. While veteran players, insert Giga Chad meme here, don't feel discouraged by teammates who have less experience. In the process of unlocking competitive, we analyze new player skill levels to optimize matchmaking in a way that feels good for everyone. This only affects accounts made on or after the October 4 release date. Anyone who has competitive unlocked prior will have access to competitive and Overwatch 2. So wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Ah, uh, uh-huh. So if right now you'd have an account at level 1, you would have competitive instantly, I guess. One big issue I have with this is 50 games... Are there, like, the, the, the 50 games of quick play, of winning them, is that the equivalent to leveling up to level 25? Because if not, then maybe they lower the amount needed to actually play competitive. I think they did the math, and I think it's close to level 25, which is what it should be. Personally, I've always wanted the rank to be available at level 50, but I think that players might lose interest if this takes too long. So probably less than level 25, my assumption as well. Also depends how fast you win them, okay? Because if you're a new player, you're not going to win every game, so it's more than 100 games probably. 33 games with a 50-50 win rate. What do you mean 33? Okay. Let's continue. It requires people winning though. So this is one good thing that we covered yesterday as well, I think. If you win, your rating increases. So in theory, if you want to do the funny and uh, throw games and stuff like that to make sure that you get placed in bronze, it's going to take you a super long time to do that. Because you need to win to unlock competitive. So you can't lose 500 games and win 50 games fast. It's going to take a while. Of course you can get that. But it's taking a long time. So it actually encourages people to win, which is awesome. Now, skill tier divisions. SR is being replaced by skill tier divisions and Overwatch 2. We made the decision to remove SR as a numeric value to relieve the sense of being stuck at a certain rank. Seeing your SR go up and down after each match almost felt like taking a test with a teacher, passing or failing you based on each individual question rather than your complete work. Hmm. It was a lot of pressure and doesn't give players an accurate representation of how they're performing overall in competitive. Tiers still exist in competitive. Bronze to Grandmaster. Each tier will have five divisions ranking from five lowest to one highest. As you progress through each tier, your division will count down until you rank up to the next tier. Top 500 will not have tier divisions. Tier divisions represent the same skill levels as SR, but they give players a higher level view of where they're placed in competitive. Each division represents approximately a 100 SR range. Players will receive a competitive update every 7 wins or 20 losses instead of every single game. So you get updates only if you win after every 7 wins or 20 losses. What happens if they, if you win some and lose some? Does this mean it only activates? Oh, we, I think it's whatever happens first. 
So let's say you play 15 games, or let's say you play 21 games, and out of that, those 21 games, you win one and lose 20. It's not like in a go. That's how it sounds. So like you play 15 games, you lose eight, you win seven, so it should update. What, whichever happens first. But wait, what happens with draws? I think it should count toward losses because losses seem like draws to everybody. Competitive updates. Wait, I was checking here. Okay. Competitive, it says 20 losses or draws. Oh, ties. My bad. I'm, I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need an, an, the other set of glasses. Actually, no. Competitive updates will show you progress and adjust your division if necessary. Looking at the past 7 or 20 games as a collective helps you better understand how lucky you were with your teammates performing in competitive rather than putting a ton of pressure on each individual game. We want you to feel like you're improving and being rewarded to advancing from the first day you start playing competitive in Overwatch 2. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. I know that a lot of games have the same type of system with skill ratings and stuff, you know, with skill tiers, which is interesting. I don't know if I like the system more than the one that I have before, okay, because for me, I play competitive almost every day, but it's gonna be super interesting, and even now, okay, like, I'm an experienced Overwatch player, even now I'm thinking that it's gonna be a bit difficult to get to GM1 every season. Not difficult, but I have to put in the effort, you know what I mean, to get to GM1, which is going to be super interesting. It gives you something to play for. And also, I feel like it's more quantifiable rather than, bro, what's your peak, 38.52? No, what's your peak? I'm, I don't know, Masters 2. You know what I mean? It also makes you play more games. So I, if, from... A game point of view, I think it's smart that they do it like this. Now, if we like it more than the other part, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Interesting. Like, for me, for example, probably the, the PlayStation would be until I get one update. You know? And see if I go up or down. I'm curious how high, how much you climb if you win seven games in a row. And how much you, if you get 20 losses in a row, how much, like, you go down. This... Seems like something nice and fresh to spark up interest in ranked. It's interesting. Match-focused UI. We're making some changes to the competitive UI based on feedback that we've seen. Bro, here's the link. Just because you said please. That we've seen in the community. Portrait borders that symbolize player level are going away from all game modes in Overwatch 2. So you can't be like, oh my god, the Widow's level 25 and they're a cheeto. You don't have player portraits. You don't know how experienced the player is. And competitive skill tiers will no longer be displayed before each competitive match. Skill tiers. These are skill tiers. So you're not going to know if you have a diamond tank in your team. If you're in Masters. Wait a minute. Skill tier and division are completely aligned with the matchmaking rating we use to determine matches. To this end, the screen has been redesigned so you can instead display your name cards and titles. The introduction of the new scoreboard will help you identify your team's needs and adjust your strategy accordingly. I would say it brings a more objective approach to the game rather than a subjective one. For example, you have somebody that's Diamond and you're GM1. Instead of being like, dude, just play Orisa or I don't know, play, play Torbjorn as DPS, you can actually maybe, what do you want to play or... Play something that works against their team instead of just go an easy hero to do, get out of it and people pointing fingers at them. Like, why are you doing that? This is interesting. We're removing medals from the scoreboard because they're too arbitrary to paint an accurate picture of a player's contribution to their team. Agreed. I don't think medals were that good. It was not an accurate representation. It's okay. Our goal with this new scoreboard is to communicate information about how the match is progressing in a more open and transparent way. Finally, the new ping system, give, I mean, you still can see who has gold damage, you know, like literally, gives you a new tool to communicate with your team. It's no surprise that teams with better synergy win games. No, teams with better players win games. You can use the ping system to better coordinate with your team without having to speak, and the system is also an effective way to enhance voice callouts with in-game cues. Okay, what's this image? So wait, we see eliminations, assists, damage, damage, healing, Mit. I think damage mitigated. You see final blows, so like the ones that they get the last hit. Solo kills, the ones that they get without helping anybody. 
weapon accuracy, this is just for Junkrat, I guess. Enemies trapped, yeah, specific ones. Okay, and you see from them as well. So you cannot see the rating. It says deaths. Okay, deaths, deaths, deaths. You cannot see the rating. How do you feel about this? Like, if you press tab, you can't see if the rating. You can't see if they're masters, if they're GM, if they're uh, bronze, stuff like that. I think it would, it's going to help, like, reduce toxicity and help, like, make you not instantly assume that you're going to lose the game because you have a diamond and they have a GM, for example. I guess I'm fine with it. It just relieves some of the pressure and you're more focused on actually playing the game rather than judging the system and who you're playing with, which is good. This being said, I strongly hope that top 500 icons are still going to be in game when you press it. When you check it out. Is Brig okay? Yeah, she's okay. She's just been through a lot. Hey, look at her hat. Hey, Baptiste. <gasps> hey! Okay. Placement matches in Season 1. The placement system from the past from past competitive seasons is changing in Overwatch 2. Instead of playing 5 matches without a rank... You'll be unranked until your first competitive update after the first 7 wins or 20 losses. So at a minimum, you have to play 7 games and win 7 games to see where you're going to be placed. You can expect to start in lower skill divisions after placement matches and progress the ranks throughout the season. All players that were ranked in competitive prior to Overwatch 2 will have their rank modified post-launch. Oh, wait. Overwatch 2 is a very different game, so we apply the formula that gives returning players an opportunity to redefine their rank when they dive into updated competitive. Most players will find their rank is slightly lower when they start out as they will be learning new concepts and metas. Okay. However, players who got to learn more about the game in our betas or who follow the Overwatch League may find themselves ranked higher than ever. <laughs> Blizzard trying to be subtle to increase viewership in Overwatch League. Very subtle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More subtle than a fist in the mouth, I swear. Okay. Game reports. Ooh, what is this? What is this? So wait, highlights. Game, we have match history chat. We have match history. We have the duration. We have the score. I mean, we do have replay system as well. Like, what the, what the hell? View game reports. What is this? We'll introduce a new section to the career profile where you can find your replays and highlights, further enabling you to learn and grow from your gameplay experience. We're adding a new feature called Game Reports under the History tab in your career profile. Game Reports provide a detailed summary of all the matches played in your current session of Overwatch. In your current session of Overwatch? What do you mean? So if I exit the game and I re-enter, I don't have them here? Resets every session? I don't like this. They should stay up 24 hours. The hell, maybe I have to restart my PC. These reports show you an overview. Oh, an overview of all the matches in your current session broken down by game mode. Opening a match will further expand your stats, including an overview of how you played, which heroes you used, and other match information. View replay, final score, the date, time, game mode, game length. View replay, performance. Eliminations, assists, deaths. Your averages, percentage played of heroes. Oh my god, look at these portraits, dude. Hey, Anna. How you doing? I like this. What happens, though, if you swap? What happens to me when I swap to 10 heroes in spawn? We're gonna bug the hell out of this feature. Looks nice and clean. Yeah, looks nice and clean. I think only top three show here, probably. Okay. Interesting. And then personal here. What, what's that personal tab? Clicking on heroes. What? Clicking on heroes played will expand on your stats and other handy information from each match's scoreboard. For example, if you played Ana during a match, your personal stats will show biotic grenade kills, enemy slipped, and nano boost assists. So you actually have the stats now? Likewise, other heroes will have specific stats to give you a detailed report of how you performed on any hero. Wait a minute. In a future update, we'll have your recently played matches persist across sessions. Good. Meaning, even if you log off, you can jump back on and review them at a later time. We'll also introduce a timeline feature to check out key moments from the match and review the final results on the scoreboard. A timeline feature to, re 
to check out key moments. Holy shit, so you don't have to go through the entire replay, dude. This is huge. This is huge. And this is also massive. Player saved. What the hell is this? Save that accuracy. Yeah, Blizzard, I think this stat is useless. Oh my god, you can either go like Ana, Baptiste, like all the heroes that you played and shows you with the averages and stuff. Holy shit, I can see the potential. You know what would be awesome, Blizzard? If I import a game code, a replay from here, I can check the stats as well before hopping in the game. Like, I would be able to check the stats too. This would be amazing. This is huge, dude. This is super huge. For educational purposes, these stats are super huge. Wouldn't surprise me if you can do that. That would be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome. Also, another feature that would be awesome is would be to check out the team comp before entering replay. Because, for example, for me, I look at nano boost assist. I have no idea if Ana should have not a lot of nano boost assist or not. Depending on who they're playing with. Because if they're playing out in a suboptimal thing gun position, which you can nano boost a target to get good value, maybe average 1.1, this being 3, maybe it should be lower, maybe it should be higher. Like, I need to see the team comps. These are, my opinion, a beginning. And I hope they're just the beginning. I hope that this is not a final version. You have to see the team comps before you can actually judge these stats. Because it's easy to say, haha, sleep that accuracy 13% when you're playing against Tracer, Sombra, uh, Diva. Like, these are just like looking at them without actually taking every factor in mind. Team comps matter a ton when checking these stats. What a team did in key moments as well matters. This is a beginning. Like healing amplified, healing prevented. I don't think anybody... Like these are just cool stats, okay? Healing amplified, healing prevented. This doesn't mean that much. Enemy slipped means body grenade kills doesn't mean that much either. Player save. This is cool. I'm curious what the hell does this mean? If somebody is about to die and I don't know, you nade them or you nano them? Is this only for nano? I have no idea. But still, we need team comps to judge this. So maybe, I don't know, a tab... Boom, Anabaptist, all heroes. Then you can see like over here the enemy, the enemies as well. This would be awesome. This would be absolutely awesome in which for, for me, for example, if you would send me a game and I would vote review it, I would probably be able to vote review it and give you like some indicators without actually even watching the game. If I would have this information. So this is huge. We need more stats. Give us stats. We want stats. We want stats. We want stats. But with what team comps were played as well. Top 500 leaderboards. Top 500 leaderboards will largely remain the same, separated by input pool. You will need to complete 25 games for any given goal in the goal queue, or 50 games in open queue. The combined goal queue leaderboard requires you to complete at least 25 matches. Top 500 leaderboards unlock two weeks into the start of each new season, and cross platform players can view the separate leader pool leaderboards by input pool. Literally the same thing. Skill decaying competitive. Wait a minute. Our team has also been considering how to approach players who have not played Overwatch recently. Or players that camp the SAG. Yeah, or players that do this. I, like, they, they, they just played at the beginning, then they, like, just, just camp this. Yeah, I, I think that this should be... Yeah, yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, these assholes should just play. Okay. Players who haven't played recently are less likely to maintain their actual prior skill output in a match. To help account for this... Oh, wait a minute. This isn't for like... Oh, it's not like decay. For this and make matches fairer, players who haven't played in a while will find their internal matchmaking rating lower to help us reevaluate and determine their current skill level. So this is for players that haven't played in a couple of seasons. Will also adjust their internal matchmaking rating more quickly, up or down, as they play matches after returning. Returning players will therefore quickly get back to the appropriate skill tier and divisions as they continue to play. So this is like for players that haven't played for a long time, not for like, you played this season, then you stop playing. Just assuming this. Imagine if it makes you play a game every day. I don't think so. But they should specify who haven't played, I don't know, Overwatch in the past three months, six months, in the past five competitive seasons. We need a timeline for this. Like, what's... When? 
When? You know, like, when does this kick in? Competitive rewards. Competitive season will be aligned with our civil, with our overall seasonal schedule, including the battle pass. We're removing the commemorative sprays and icons players earned each season, including the top 500 sprays and icons. Oh, no! Nobody used them anyway. We're introducing new limited competitive titles for your name card. I want Giga Chad that you can earn as you climb the ranks. These titles will be a way to show off to other players how high you climbed in a season. Oh, oh my god. Rrr. What title do you have, dude? I'm Giga Chad. Oh, mrr. You can only earn these titles at the end of the current competitive season and only use them in the season following. Okay. Apex has something like this, right? I think so. Competitive points will continue to be the reward currency for winning competitive matches. Rewarding 10 points for win and 3 for a draw. Earning 3,000 points allows you to unlock a golden weapon. It's the same. Right? It's the same. It's still 3,000 right now. For any of the Overwatch heroes, including new heroes like Sojourn, Jagger, Queen, and Kiriko. However, we'll be capping the number of bonus competitive points earned at the end of the season to the highest skill tier you reach in any of your goals, including open queue. So it's capped with how much you get. Rank 1 name card would be awesome. Same competitive rewards, yeah. I was hoping they would add, I don't know, dude, diamond guns or stuff, stuff like that. Ah, you used to get 15 per win. Now you get, now you get 10 per win. Continue to be reward, rewarding 10 points for a win. Okay, now they're lowered a bit. So to make you play more. Wait, we can check that actually. Competitive. Roll queue. Rewards. Rewards. Tier legend. Doesn't say how much you get. 25. This is how much you get at the end of the season. Do you see anywhere where it says it's 15 coins? I have no idea. Would it be awesome if Blizzard would let you trade your golden points for other currency? It shows right below the brackets. Okay, I'm lazy. Evolving the competitive experience. These changes are the beginning of our new competitive experience in Overwatch, and we'll continue to watch for ways to deliver fair and exciting matches in our core game mode. Uh, upcoming features include a skill progression report each time you get a competitive update. We can't wait for each season to provide a new chapter for everyone looking to grow their skills, and our team looks forward to all the changes coming to competitive 2.0. Okay, I'm excited for this. You know why I'm excited? I'm excited just because it's new. Am I the only one? I'm excited because it's new. I don't know if it's going to be better than what we have now, but because it's new, it feels fresh. So, yeah. I don't know. It might suck. It might not suck. We'll have to wait and play. Basically, it's exciting because it's new. Thank you, Blizzard. Now, I don't know what to say about this with not showing uh, a skill tier and stuff. I don't know how it's going to feel. I hope it reduces toxicity and promotes better gameplay. And... Placements okay under stand seven, and I strongly hope that they actually improve these stats and um, and add ways of knowing, of analyzing the stats without with you knowing the team comes, dude. That's literally what matters here. Because again, I'm just giving you a specific example. If you play Ana and you're playing against I don't know divers and stuff, and you don't have a good nano boost target because you're playing with let's say Mercy, let's say Junkrat, let's say May, let's say, I don't fucking know for tank. Let's say Zagia, and they're playing long range poke. Of course, your nano boost assist should be low. So maybe Swapana, you know what I mean? Like just looking at the stats like these, uh uh. It's a beginning though, and I hope they're gonna improve on them. Um, so the thing that I'm mostly excited about though is this one timeline feature to check out key moments from the match. This is what I love to see. I would love to see this because we can actually skip in the VOD and see in the replay where we gotta go. Timeline is insane. This being said, I really, really, really want to have these features available not only for personal games, but for imported games as well. Because if you see this, it says game reports. And probably when you click on a game, 
it goes to this tab summary and personal. Now, if you go in replays and import a code from chat, for example, I want to have the same summary and personal stats as well so that this helps us create better educational content so people learn how to play the game better, so people have more fun, so people climb in SR, so people flex, so people like Giga Chat, so they flex with their titles, so stuff like that, and then they can flame their teammates because they hire a SR than them.